Progressive lawmakers renewed call for impeachment of Justice Thomas. Now, this became much deeper than I thought it was. A ProPublica article detailed that Thomas took lavish, undisclosed trips paid by a Republican donor. So now Somebody came. For, sorry. Go ahead. Wait, sorry. Are they calling for his, uh, his impeachment again? <laughs> Somebody was just in the comment section talking about Peach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that Peach? Oh, uh, Peach. Clarence. Yeah. Yeah, they want to impeach him Terrence. Uh, I mean Clarence Thomas. Yeah, they want him up out of here. Now listen to this: for over twenty years, Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas has been uh, treated to luxury vacations by billionaire Republican donor Harlan Crow. Okay, we don't know who this dude is. We're about to find out. He goes on cruises in far-flung locales on a Crow's yacht, flies on a private jet, and keeps company with Crow's powerful friends in billionaire's private resort. The extent of crows uh, have never been revealed until now. So when you read this, I'm going to jump down. He go on these extravagant extravagant trips on his yacht and to his private resort. We know, we know. There's a particular part that uh, came interesting. Let me see. If Thomas had chartered a plane in a 162-foot yacht himself, and total cost of the trip could have exceeded 500000 Fortunately for him, that wasn't necessary. He was on vacation with real estate uh, magnet and Republican me- mega donor Harlan Crow, who owned the jet and the yacht too. All right. Look at this. For more than two decades, Thomas has accepted luxury trips virtually every year from the Dallas businessman, businessman without disclosing them. Documents and interviews show a public servant who has a salary of $285,000. He has vacation on Crow's super yacht around the globe. He flies on Crow's bum, uh, global 5,000 jet. He has gone from going with Crow to the Bohemian Grove. <laughs> We're not surprised and shocked. Oh, no, 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 no. But we ain't scared. We're we going to talk about it. I ain't scared of you motherfuckers. We're going to talk about it. But Crow to the Bohemian Grove, the exclusive California all-male retreat to long into face. Crow's sprawling ranch in East Texas. And Thomas typically spends about a week every summer at Crow's private resort in, you know, what's we call it? The extent of the frequency of Crow's apartment gives. Oh, we know, we know. So basically the big part about this is that he goes to a secret society gathering with this man. Now remember, this is Texas. We know this happened before in Texas of a Supreme Court justice being friendly at these all male resorts, secret societies, and all that stuff. We're gonna get to it. Then you guys show this. Harlan Crow seeks zoning at Highland Park home for collection. Now I can't show this article, but basically this Harlan dude, he's a collector of Nazi memorabilia, memorabilia. Hitler. He has Mao Zedong, Mao Zedong, how you say Mao and um, Lenin statues that's communist. So you have a Republican donor who collects communist statues and Nazi memorabilia. And he also is funding, or at least funding trips for Justice Clarence Thomas. So who's Clarence Thomas? Who is he connect? What is he about? What is his real politics? Remember, we talked about Clarence Thomas in the past. He once wrote a uh, thesis, I guess you would call it, or a paper, where he defined himself as a black nationalist. But he married to a white woman. But he married a white woman. So <laughs> he's a black nationalist married, married to, to a white, a white woman. woman who's a Supreme Court who hang out Republican mega donors who are communist Nazi sympathizers. You got whole taps that are married to a white that's woman. That's true. That's true. But that's a very <laughs> blurry kind of like, damn, you're going in all type of directions. What is your real politics? What do you really believe? But this right here was from 2016. It said, Outrage is a collector of Hitler paintings, plan to host Marco Rubio. Hold on. Apologies about that. Hold on. His wife is the plug. <laughs> <laughs> well, his, his wife was about to get his ass. His wife was about to get him um impeached. She's yeah. the one that uh, what did she do? Oh, which did she make calls to somebody on January sixth or 
She did something. She gave some money or something to somebody. That was one way. They, they've they already been painting this narrative. They're trying to get yeah, Clarence get Thomas him. out of. Yeah, they've been trying to get him. But the guy's name is uh, Harlo, Harlan Crow. Now, I want to show this. Harlan Crow, Republican presidential candidate Marco Rubio, has planned to attend a fundraiser last night at the home of real estate uh, here, Harlan Crow, who owns paintings of Adolf Hitler. Now, this is from 2015. Last night, there was a Jewish high uh, holiday. Uh, I'm sorry, let me get closer. Yom Kippur holding the $2,000 per couple event on such a day seems sloppy event. Da, 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 da. Rubio intended host also owns a signed copy of Mein Kampf. It's a communist manifesto. <laughs> who is these people? Who? How they said? Who's these niggas? <laughs> who is these niggas? But, he was obviously intentionally selected to be in the position that he's in right now. Well, that, that, that would make sense. Now, remember in Texas, this happened to Justice Scalia spent his final hours in the company of secret society of hunters that has existed since the 1600s. Justice Scalia was a Supreme Court justice who used to go to Texas do part of the hunting, as the title says there. And he ended up dead. He woke up dead with a pillowcase over his face. And they didn't take him to the hospital. They didn't call anybody. They took his ass straight to the coroner. And they did no, um, what do they call it? They didn't um, perform CPR? No, no. What? When you go through the body to see how they die. The autopsy. Word? They did no autopsy. They did none of that. They just literally took him to the coroner, cut him up, and buried him. Foul play. But they tell you that nothing happened. No, no foul play. He just died in his sleep to a heart attack. Yeah, we believe it. Justice Scalia was found dead. You can't dead wake in, up dead. <laughs> hey, he did. <laughs> Justice Scalia was found dead in the Texas ranch on the morning of February 13th. It has now been revealed that several of his 35 companions during the trip were members of the International Order of St. Hubertus. We're going to get to that. The Secret of Hunting Society was founded in 1695 in Central Europe. John Poindexter, the owner of the ranch, and the man who found Scalia dead, and C. Allen Foster, and lawyer and Scalia's travel com companion, are members. Now, this right here is uh, the Order of St. Hubertus. Hubertus. This is based off of the one of the saints, St. Hubertus, the one who, uh, what do you call it, um, became Christian. This is part of the belief. He said, with the Christians, go ahead. What's, his, what's the name of that show that was on Netflix? There was a TV show on Netflix, um, Shadow? Shadow. It's called Shadow. It's about a girl who had the light, or she had these powers of light, and this man who had the power of shadow caused a rip in the ocean and stopped people from being able to go through it. And he's tracked this girl down, and there was this uh, deer. Shadow and bone. Shadow and bone. If you look up the, let's hit the what's called the description. Uh, where did it? Just scroll down. That's a sinister uh, forces seven. plot against a younger soldier after she revealed a magical power that may unite her world. Well, basically, there was a steed they were after. There's a, there this myth mythical deer that was all white that gave them unlimited power. But I'm tying it to this because Saint Hubertus is the he represents mathematicians, opticians, metal workers, and he's known for basically the forest and all that other stuff. Now, when you look into this. When you look at the, the deer, what it represents, and historically, it represents what they call the horned god, which or Cernunos. Which is Pan. Exactly. So basically, the order of St. Hubertus is the order of the horned god. And I'm telling you, they believe in this stuff. These pagan, they, they're pagans. All of them. Politicians, celebrities. We all know about the uh, Grove and whatever going there and moves and playing around a burning... Uh, a uh, 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 wooden fetus, basically. We know. So who the hell is Clarence Thomas being associated with these people? He, he's into some deep shit. <laughs> and you know this stuff is real. We didn't get to it the last two weeks because we didn't really go into this stuff. Or we don't go into it as often as we used to, should I, should I say. I know we talked about Meg Stein a little bit, how she looked good at the, what's we call it, her first time showing herself publicly. American Gods is a great case study very very good show. i love that show as far as i don't read really, the writing of the show is okay but what it represents is really really you good. didn't like it but make this down there's this thing they have they call it the the great work or the magnum opus op, opus how you say it opus where they have these rules set where these colors mean things so you notice you'll see a lot of people in the industry they'll wear all black all the time that's the first stage or the, the grito stage 
which means, and I'll just read it roughly right here. Hold on. It means the uh, the chaos stage, basically. That's the black stage. And then you have the white stage, which is the purifying stage. So what happens is, it's called um, albedo, A-L-B-E-D-O. White represents pur purification. So you'll notice you'll see the celebrities disappear when something happens. Like May did. Like a laser getting shot, going through a trial, him being found guilty. You disappearing for a few months, and then when you show yourself, you're in the all white. All these people are witches, and I'm saying this because we just talked about Clarence Thomas, who was associated with people who are 100% warlocks, <laughs> and you see this stuff happen with them. The last stage of this thing called Magnum Opus or the Great Work is the Red. Well, who was just in Red? I'm sure y'all remember at the Super Bowl. Rihanna was Rihanna. in all Red. Rhiannon. Rhiannon. That's a whole nother. That goes into Fleetwood Mac song, that song Rhiannon. Which is literally witches. That goes into a whole nother line. We're not going to go down that line. And she was, let me show this, pregnant. Revealed she was pregnant in the all red. We're not going to go any deeper. I'm just pointing out what these people believe. These people believe in some weird stuff. If we can go real deep into this, to let you know that we're gonna go even further with this. Everything is a, a ritual in Holly weird. This is how we can go further. It's not even just in Holly weird. Oh no, politics, everybody. Politics. Well, that's part of Hollywood. Politics is entertainment at this point. We should know that because they definitely completely Donald Trump over. being the the agent of chaos. After ditching OnlyFans and finding Jesus, Black China celebrates her doctorate degree from a biblical Bible college. Now, this woman's name is Angel White. But she chose a stage name of Black China. Her mama name is Tokyo, Tokyo Tony. Tony. That clearly is not her well, real name. You know name. her as a reality star, Black on, China. But she's reconnecting with God. And why is Fox News talking and, about Black China? And why does Fox News even care about what Black China is doing? Because they're painting themselves as a Christian, um, a Christian network. And we know the industry like to use religion to push forth their agendas. Now, the, the main thing that came away from Black China was the fact that she decided to remove a Bafa mat <laughs> on her ass. <laughs> sorry, sorry, y'all. That, that was disgusting. <laughs> that was disgusting. That was nasty. Hey, the is gone, boy. That was nasty. I, I got to do something to just clean what you just did. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. That was nasty. <laughs> got no manners. Anyway. <laughs> Black China. Black China removes <laughs> demonology tattoo after dissolving facial fill filler and getting breast reduction. She also got, I think I have, butt deflated as well. Her butt deflated. Now, ask yourself, why is a woman who was a, I don't know what you would call what you call her, a stripper? Was she a stripper? We're going to be nice and say she's a socialite. Okay, an industry socialite. Wendy sexualized. Williams. Wendy Williams is a perfect case of they will bring you up and then they'll tear you down. Yeah, Wendy Williams is, yeah. Her fall started when she had that little mishap on Halloween when she's dressed yeah, she up as a Statue of Liberty. And like, fail. That was, her, that was her downfall. Now, why the hell she got a tattoo of a Baphomet? Well, her mama did tell you that she had a Baphomet tattooed on her ass. And she got it, she allegedly got it removed. Black China, she will become a tragedy soon. You think well, so? she's already a tragedy. You think? And the gonna... lifestyle that she's chosen. We'll see what happened to her in the next couple. Her of own months. mama said she wouldn't be around her. Her mom did an interview and she was talking <laughs> shit about her. She was just like, "I ain't following." But this is a that's a storyline. They're that's part what, of a storyline. The industry, whether it be politics, movies, sports, is a storyline. That's why we call our channel "Lost in the Script." It's a script. And if you pay attention, you can read what's between the lines and what they're really doing and what it really means. Her down.